Hey, good morning or good afternoon. We're here with Karen Margulis and Jenny Furr, and we're going to get ready to have a pastel demo painting. We Hi. already have three oh. followers. Oh. <laughs> Hi, welcome to my studio, and it's a nice uh, Sunday morning, and it's a great time to paint. So I'm going to do a pastel painting this morning, just a quick study. And this is my reference photo that I'll be using, and it is a scene from my recent trip to Sweden. So these are some uh, trees and a field and a beautiful sky that I, I um, took a picture of while I was in Sweden. And to begin the painting, I will first block in the big shapes. And I'm painting on a piece of Wallace pastel paper that is very hard to get. So it's kind of like painting on gold, but it'll be fun to use. And I'm just simply blocking in the big shapes. I'm not really worried about copying the photo. I just kind of want to have the general idea of what the photo is about, which is about these big trees and the beautiful light in the sky. Kind of like the relationship between these two trees is what's important. But I just want to block them in as big shapes to begin with. The next step in my process is to block in the big shapes with one color. And so what I do is I look and see what are the darkest shapes that I see. And those happen to be the trees. So I'm going to block them in right now. And actually it appears that there's several trees together. So I indicate their trunks. So blocking in the big shapes of the trees to begin with. There's a smaller tree over here to balance out these big ones. And then I'm going to darken the foreground area. I'm going to take another color and very lightly layer it over the first color. The first color I chose was purple. Now I'm choosing a dark blue. And the wonderful thing about pastels is how easy it is to layer colors one on top of the other to make more interesting mixes of color. So I can very lightly do this layering and I'll have a much more interesting painting than if I just started right away with with green. This is a dark blue and then I am going to go ahead and put some dark green on the trees now. In the shadowed areas, I'm putting in the dark green, and then I want to create the feeling of light, which I'll do in just a minute. So then the next step in the process is if I blocked in all the dark areas, it's time to block in all the light areas. And in this particular painting, the light areas happen to be the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and block in the colors I want to use in the sky, starting at the top of the sky with the darkest color that I want. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in with this sky color and I'm starting to break up the, the shape of the trees to create a, a more of an airy feeling with, for, for the trees. So I start with a big simple shape and then I work my way to break them up and add what we call sky holes. So allow the sky to peek through the branches. But I start the painting with the big shape first. As the sky goes down closer to the horizon, it gets a little bit lighter. Actually, takes on a greenish cast. So, what I've done is I've selected all the pastels that I want to use for the painting in advance. And I put them here on a tray. And what this does is allows me to paint without having to think. I mean, you always have to think, but I don't have to to slow down and stop and think about every color I'm going to use because I've already selected them and put them on my tray. And in this scene, one of the things that I really liked about it was how it was this just golden glow at the horizon. So I've taken this nice golden yellow pastel and I'm working it down in at the horizon area. And I'm 
breaking up the areas where you would see the tree trunks, the same way that I created the sky holes with this golden glow. It's a little bit lighter as it transitions into the green or blue of the sky. And I'm going to take that blue and sort of work it back and forth along with the yellow so that there's a seamless transition. I don't want there to be a parfait of color in the sky. I want it to be a believable transition. So I have my dark areas, I have my light areas. Now I'm going to continue on and do what is in the middle value range, which is down here. I think what I'm going to do is first do a, a layer of, oops, of a rust color. Oh, it's jumping out of my fingers. And this is just so that I can get a more interesting, I consider this my dirt. It's just a little bit of more, a more interesting color on the ground, dirt color. And the, the grasses down there sort of pick on up this golden glow yellowy glow. So I'm going to take that. Actually, I think I need another one a little bit deeper. Yellow. Try this. And then it transitions into this rusty color in the shadow area. The last step of the painting is to go ahead and finish the green. And so I have the darker green in the shadow and you can see where it's kind of picking up some of that sunlight, so I'm coming in with a warmer green on the side of the tree that is, is getting that light or warmth. And I don't want to put it everywhere, I want to leave some of the purple underneath. So I just have to use a very light touch. Just to break it up a little bit more. It gets a little bit lighter towards the outer edges. Give it that nice glow. And then one of the final steps I'll do is I'm going to take a thin dark blue pastel and kind of come in and put in, indicate some more of these tree trunks. These are the details that come in at the end. So notice throughout the painting I start with big simple shapes and as the painting develops I get more and more detailed or more and more precise with my marks. One thing that I need to do is I need to push some of these trees that are in the distance back into the distance. Now they have this glow so I'm going to use this kind of greenish color. But over here they're kind of, I don't like that color, let's see. I want to have a lead into the painting, so I'm making a little bit more of a linear type mark making in this section. And what I need to do is break this area up a little bit more with the sky color because it got a little bit too dense. So I, I'm going to come back and take that sky color and break up these distant trees. These are supposed to be trees way in the distance. So they don't have to be detailed, but I do want to break them up just slightly like that. And. I'm going to add a little bit of that blue sky color down in here, moving the color around the painting just so that I can sh make a, a, a relationship between what's happening in the sky and then what's happening on the ground. And so that's pretty much the process. Starting with big simple shapes and then gradually working my way and getting more and more detail. And I can stop at this point if I want it to be sort of loose and painterly, or I can continue painting and get a, a lot more detail. That's totally up to the individual artist and, and what they like to do. But that, that would be 
what I, uh, this would be my stopping point anyways, and I would evaluate it and see if I would make any changes. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this demo, and you can visit my website at karenmargulis.com for lots more tips. Turn it off. Mm. Did it not even film? Did two live viewers? It didn't say anything. I had seven. Years.